Hello everyone, Daz here and welcome to another Slider Revolution Module Editing Basics tutorial. In this one we're going to go through the process of publishing your modules. Specifically, I'll show you step by step the two different ways you can add your Slider Revolution designs to any WordPress page or post. For the first way, let's look at how to add a module to a page or post using the Slider Revolution block type. In your post or page, click the plus symbol for adding a new block of content. Select Slider Revolution from the available block types. A gallery will open up showing all the modules you've created. Pick the module you want to add. I'm going to go with the Bubble Morph Hero module here, hover over it and click the plus button to insert it. You'll see the name of the module you've created there as well as a thumbnail. And that's all there is to it. If I click preview, you can see the Bubble Morph Hero module is working in the page just as intended. Everything else you see here on the page comes from your WordPress theme. In my case, it's the default WordPress 2020 theme. And if you're happy with all that, you're good to publish. If not, you can go back to your page or post and make some modifications. On the top right of the block, you'll see the Open Block Settings button. Click on it to bring up the Slider Revolution Block Settings window. Here you have a number of options for adjusting how your module will be displayed. From a basic editing standpoint, you probably won't need to make any changes here, but let's look at each of the options briefly just the same. The first change you can make here is to your module layout. The options here of auto width, full width and full screen are options we covered in our creating modules tutorial video. If you'd like to learn more about what those sizing options do, there's a link to the relevant section of that video in the description. Block offsets or module wrapping offsets are settings you can adjust to add empty space around each side of your module. If you want to use block offsets, you'll have to set them individually for each of the four most common display types. They're off by default, so you'll need to toggle each one that you want to control to on before making whatever pixel spacing changes you would like. The icon at the top of each column shows you the area in relation to your module that the offset will apply. For example, the first column shows you the offset applies above your module. The second column shows you it applies to the right of your module. The third column is below your module and the fourth column applies to the left of your module. The Bubble Morph module I added a moment ago spans the full width of the browser window. If I wanted to add some offset either side of it using block offsets, I could add 100 pixels of offset in the second column and another 100 pixels of offset in the fourth column. If I close the window and click preview, you can now see the spacing either side of the module has been added. Okay, back to the block settings window. There's a few other settings here, specifically the block depth and pop-up settings, that are a little more advanced and beyond the scope of the basics you need to know to get up and running with publishing your Slider Revolution modules. But let's talk about them briefly, just so you know what they are used for. The block depth option you see there has a single Z index field. The value in this field determines the vertical stacking order of your module in relation to other content on your site. If you find your module is interfering with other content, such as overlapping it or being overlapped by other content, you can try modifying the value here. A higher value will display your module above anything on your site that has a lower Z-index value. A lower value will place your module under anything with a higher Z-index value. The default and lowest value is zero, and that will be the ideal setting in most cases. The Insert Module as Pop-Up Module option allows you to set your modules as pop-ups. If you set the Use Pop-Up Radio button to on, a number of extra options appear on the right. The pop-up after time setting delays the timing of the display of your module for a certain period. If I click it to on, the default time is set to 2000 milliseconds. If we close the settings window and preview our WordPress page, you'll notice there's now a 2000 millisecond delay from when we load the page to when our module displays. This is a really useful setting for drawing attention to your module. You'll notice that the rest of the web page has been dimmed, which helps to highlight the content of your module. But it is a pop-up, meaning that if you click anywhere on the web page outside of the module, the pop-up will close back down. Let's go back to our Slider Revolution block settings and set pop-up after time back to off. The next setting there is pop-up at scroll position. This works exactly as it sounds. If you set it to on, it will make your module pop-up after the user has scrolled the number of pixels on your page that you set in the offset field. The default of 2000 pixels will work for our default WordPress page, so let's preview that. If I scroll down, our module pops up at the 2000 pixel mark. Back in our block settings, notice that I turned pop-up after time to off before setting pop-up at scroll position to on. 
In most cases this makes sense, but you can have both settings turned on if you want and they will work together. Let's preview it with both on. First, the timed pop-up will display. If I close that and then scroll down, the scroll pop-up will then activate. So if you're trying to achieve something specific with drawing your visitor's attention, you can use both of these settings together if you want. That'll do for pop-ups as the rest of the options are a more advanced topic for another video. Let's close this down and go back to our WordPress page. The Select Module button enables you to choose a different module to replace the one you've already inserted. And finally, the pen icon you see there is a shortcut button that enables you to open your module directly into the module editor for quick editing. So that's how to use WordPress's Gutenberg blocks to add a module to a page or a post. The second way you can add a module is by using a shortcode. To do that, locate the module you want to use in the Slider Revolution dashboard area. Hover over the module and click the down arrow on the bottom right, then click Embed. The standard module embedding window will open. There are a bunch of different embedding options here, but for now, we're only interested in the first one. So copy the first shortcode listed by clicking the blue button to the right of it. Go to your WordPress post or page and paste the copied shortcode directly in, which automatically creates a Gutenberg shortcode block. To see the module in the post or page, you can just preview it or you can publish it and you'll be able to see it live on your site. So that's the two ways to publish a module into a regular piece of WordPress content. You will have noticed that when we do publish a module in a post or page, all the other elements of the WordPress theme we're using will also be displayed alongside our module. For example, in addition to the Bubble Morph Hero module, we can also see the site title, site tagline, navigation menu, and a search button from our WordPress 2020 theme. But what if we don't want to see any of that? You might want your module to take up the entire browser view, or you might be putting together a landing page or a full website made up of modules and just don't want to see anything else there. For that, we'll need to hide everything about our theme that we don't want to see. In the sidebar of the post or page you are working on, look for the slider revolution panel and expand it. Toggle the blank template switch to on. This hides all elements of your theme, allowing you to display just your modules. Now when we look at the same Bubble Morph Hero module we just published, you can see it's displayed all by itself with no other theme elements visible at all. As an additional tip, if you start making a module from a template and you already know you're going to want to hide other theme elements when you publish it, you can have Slider Revolution do that for you automatically. For that to happen, when you pick a template to install, you'll see a Create Blank Page option under the Install Template Pack button. Just toggle that to On. Slider Revolution will then create and activate a blank page for you, and it will add your module to that page automatically. After clicking Install Template Package, you'll get a blank page created dialog box. You can close that if you want, or you can click the Visit button to immediately view the page you just created. If you're using a template that contains multiple modules, such as one that is designed to build an entire website, all the modules of that template package will be added to your new page as well, and in the correct order. This here is an example of an automatically created blank page using the Storyblocks template, which shows all the modules of the Storyblocks page neatly inserted in order. And that's how to publish your modules into WordPress. Thanks for watching and enjoy using Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now. The world's most powerful WordPress builder.